morning, everyone. Our opening hymn today is on the 169. Bind us together. Verses. Uh, verses one and two. God of mercy and love, you wash away our sins in water, you give us new birth in the Spirit, and redeem us in the blood of Christ. As we celebrate Christ's resurrection, increase our awareness of these blessings, and renew your gift of life within us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
reading from the Acts of the Apostles, the whole group of believers was united, heart and soul. <clears throat> no one claimed for his own use anything that he had, as everything they owned was held in common. The Apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus with great power, and they were all given great respect. None of their members was ever in want, as all those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money from them to present it to the apostles. It was then distributed to any members who might be in need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love hath no end. Be to the Lord, for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, His love has no end. Let the sons of Aaron say, His love has no end. Let those who fear the Lord say, His love has no end. Be to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. The Lord's right hand has triumphed. His right hand raised me up. <coughs> I shall not die. I shall live and recount his deeds. I was punished. I was punished by the Lord, but not doomed to die. Give thanks to the Lord for his good, for his love has The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. We give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his love has no end. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ has been begotten by God. And whoever loves the Father that begot him loves the child who he begets. We can be sure that we love God's children. If we love God himself and do what he has commanded us, this is what loving God is, keeping his commandments. And his commandments are not difficult because anyone who has been begotten by God has already overcome the world. This is the victory over the world, our faith. Who can overcome the world? Only the man who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus Christ, who came by water and blood, not with water only, but with water and blood, with the Spirit as another witness, since the Spirit is the truth. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel Acclamation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus said, you believe the those you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. Was not with them when Jesus came. 
When the disciples said, We've seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I see the holes of the nails made in his hands, I can put my finger into the holes they made. And unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed. Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. And then he spoke to Thomas. Put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen me, and yet believe. For many other signs that Jesus worked that the disciples saw, but they're not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of our Lord. You know, they had it easy, the apostles. They did have it easy, and I suspect they'd be the first ones to admit that. And they'd certainly believe in the phrase our Lord says, Who time to us, you believe, as you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen, and yet believe. I say they had it easy, even though many of them had hard lives, short lives, some of them, most of them ended up killed by the authorities, martyred in our terms, painfully, excruciatingly, and they had it easy. Of course they had it easy. Because they'd seen him die, they'd seen a Roman soldier stick a spear through his heart, and then on the Sunday they'd seen him alive again. Of course they had it easy. How could you doubt when you'd seen him Talk to him, even being invited to touch him. After you touched the corpse itself, of course they had it easy. It would change your life, and there's the rub. There's the rub. Totally life changing. Honestly, folks, if you'd met him in that garden or the upper room a week after the events, a week today, what kind of perspective would that put on your life? What kind of perspective would it put on your worries? What kind of perspective would it put on your deep, deep worries and griefs? Losing someone to death, facing death yourself, or a dreadful diagnosis from a doctor? What kind of perspective would it put that into? They had it easy. But this is very early days. As I say, it's a week after the events. More or less. Our Lord comes and twice he says, Peace be with you. And that sounds very holy to our ears. <clears throat> but they're in a panic. Would you be? <laughs> what he's saying to them is, Calm down. And for a second time, Calm down, will you? Because we all know our Lord is a scouser in his heart. <laughs> but one that you could trust with your wallet. Tell them not to panic, because then it is what yours wouldn't be. It, it, it's a scene of incredible reality. The corpse marked, scouts together. And Thomas isn't there. He's out getting the shop, and he's been to the Astor or the Lidl. He's back with his bags, with, you know, a couple of bottles of milk and a loaf of bread, whatever. And Thomas is you and me. Of course he doesn't believe. Oh, for goodness sake, you're not hysterical. You're not just seeing what you want to believe. You're having a vision, you're having a hallucination. And the women saw him first. Well, obviously, women are hysterical. So things don't change. Unless I put my hands in his side, I don't believe. And then they have him. So, <laughs> come on, stick him in, stick him in, touch me. And again, like you or me, he probably doesn't have the guts to put his hand in. He just wants the earth to swallow him up. I can't explain this. I can't explain this, but it's true. I can't 
they spoke, God, or the other things that come to my mind are really naff examples. I can't explain to you the laws of gravity, but I know the moon circled around us. I can't explain to you how the rocket's warp will come back again with such incredible accuracy, but I'd see it happening. I can certainly say to another generation, oh, it did happen. Those rockets could land with big point accuracy. It's similar, but these, they can't explain it, but they know it to be true. And it's changed their lives. After these 40 days that we'll be celebrating in this season of Easter, they went out and lived their lives and had a perspective on life that was totally, totally different from what they'd experienced before. Many of them did things that are gobsmacking. Paul and his missionary journeys. We have legends of Thomas going up to India. Peter, this simple fisherman who's probably gone no more than 60 miles in his life, actually ends up in Rome and gives his witness there, his martyrdom. <clears throat> None of us would like to die in public and shamefully, but they did. And with only hesitation, hardly a hesitation, because their lives have been changed in this strange new way. And it's only because life has changed for so many others that we're here 2,000 years on. Our lives have changed. Our lives have changed. We have hope. And not just hope beyond that. Hope that the life we live is of meaning and of significance, not just for us and our loved ones, but actually for the entire world. Stone now, Brooklyn, my friend. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the body of Spirit, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father of all mighty. And as he will come to judge the living and the dead, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the judgment of God, and life everlasting. Amen. Let's turn to the Father now with our needs, the needs of the church. We pray for Pope Francis and ask the Lord that he give him renewed strength to continue his mission of reform and renewal in our church. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Today, on Divine Mercy Sunday, let us renew our commitment to compassion, love, mercy and forgiveness in all our dealings with those who may have injured or offended us in the past. Lord, hear us. Lord, us. We pray for the aid workers who were so tragically killed in Gaza this week, and for their colleagues who selflessly risk their lives, tending to the sick, hungry, wounded, and the dispossessed. Lord, hear us. Lord, we bow our heads and remember in silence our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. <coughs> Lord, hear us. Ask our Lady, Queen of Peace, and give us a peace. Amen. Amen. Now the 
kids have anything to tell us? Kids have anything to tell us? Who's going to speak? Arthur, you or Olivia? What have you been up to? I can't believe you're caught short for words, Olivia. Well, I'm sure you've had a good time. We've been talking about Jesus. And we talked about how happy his friends were to see him again. Good man, Arthur. You believe in God because you have faith. Come here and let me ruffle your hair. Now, <laughs> well, that's how you should, Lord. Let's hear it for kids, everyone. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness, we have this bread to all. The earth has given it, human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my many iniquities. Cleanse me. Pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be accepted. God, the Almighty Father. Lord, through faith and baptism, we have become a new creation. Accept the offerings of your people and of those born again in baptism and bring us to eternal happiness. We ask this. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well, always and everywhere, to give you thanks through our Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you with greater joy than ever in this Easter season. Christ became our pastoral sacrifice. He has made us children of the light, rising to new and everlasting life. He has opened the gates of heaven to receive his faithful people. His death is our ransom from death. His resurrection is our rising to life. To the joy of the resurrection, he gives the whole world, while the choirs of heaven sing forever to your glory. <laughs> Thank you. 
grace, and always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his body. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. And so, most loving and holy Father, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, <laughs> broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more he gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this for you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. loving and holy Father, as we celebrate this memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you seated at your right hand, we proclaim the word of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the offering of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed out to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your soul, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to a table, Lord, affirm us in unity, so that together with Francis of Paul, Malcolm our Bishop, and all your priestly people, and we walk your ways with faith and hope, and we strive to bring joy and trust into you. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection. Give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion <coughs> with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with Saint Paul of the Cross, Saint Joseph, and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ. Through him with him in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. So we have his encouragement to say, 
takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called for the supper of the Lord. Lord, In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.
the new sheet, folks, uh, I have a correction to make on the very last page. The spring market that should have taken place in the Catholic Club has been cancelled because of the weather. Um, but I think a new day has been set. Pardon? I think a new date has been set. I'm sorry, Carl, I can't see you. Is there a new date being set for Not the spring market? Yet, no. Right, well, when it is, we'll advertise it, obviously. But um, for your delight and delectation um, over in the club, um, uh, the Whiskey Wooders are still playing. Um, also, I have to report, uh, sadly, the death of another of our, our old friends, Monica Adair, died at the age of 90 a few days ago. And her requiem will be towards the end of the month, the 25th or the 28th. It still has to be finalised. I'll give you plenty of um, opportunity. Uh, also, you'll see there's no mass on Thursday. That's allowed me to go to the requiem of uh, Father Barry McAllister, quite a few years younger than me, actually, who died of, uh, after a long battle with cancer. So his requiem is actually in Wigan um, on Thursday. So there's no mass. Eternal rest, grant unto them. And let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Stand now for God's blessing. <laughs> Almighty God, may the Easter sacraments we've received live forever in our minds and hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you all. May Almighty God bless and protect you now and always. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you, sir. Our final hymn is Thine be the glory. Number six, seven, eight. <coughs> Oh,